Welcome to the Battle Ready Sermon Podcast with Captain Rob Westwood Payne. Spiritual life. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this day. We have anticipated this day. We have gone through the darkness of Good Friday. We have gone through the silence of Easter Saturday. We have sat in the darkness, but we have anticipated this moment, and now it is here. And we ask that you will speak to us through your word as we go through this event again and see what you have to say to us on this Easter Sunday. May we each go away with something in our hearts this week that will take us into the next week and into the future and beyond. We pray these words in your name. Amen. Amen. So what we're thinking about this morning on this Easter Sunday 2023 is who can help with the toughest command? Who can help us keep the toughest command? So the first thing we need to sort out is, well, which one is the toughest command? Which is the toughest commandment? Now, you may immediately turn to the Ten Commandments when you hear the word commandment, and you think through those Ten Commandments set out in Exodus chapter 20, and you think, well, which one of those might be the hardest? Maybe it's remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. Maybe that's the toughest one. Maybe it's do not murder. I don't know. If you do find that the toughest one, maybe come and have a conversation with me afterwards. Unless, of course, I'm the victim, in which case go and speak to someone else. Maybe it's do not steal. Maybe it's don't commit adultery. Uh, maybe it's all sorts of, uh, of one of those ten commandments. Maybe it's the second commandment. Maybe that's the toughest. You shall have no idol before me says God. How easy it is to find an idol in this world that can replace our affections to God, our love for God, and how much that can become so important in our life life that it's more important than God. Maybe that's the toughest command. Or maybe you think of some of uh, of Jesus' commands when he was on earth. Jesus said the two most important commandments are, love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul and mind and body, and love your neighbour as yourself. Maybe one of those is the toughest commands. Don't look at your neighbour. <laughs> but maybe that's the toughest command. <laughs> Certainly, loving every person that we come across is tough. And so is maintaining and growing our love for God. Maybe that's the toughest command. We also remember that Jesus, during his ministry, commanded us things like, love your enemies. If it's difficult to love those that you profess to love sometimes, then surely it's even tougher to love your enemies. And Jesus was speaking to a crowd uh, in, in a place that was occupied by enemies, occupied by the Romans. Imagine what they must have felt when they heard Jesus say, love your enemies, love your Roman occupiers. Maybe that's the toughest commandment. Well, I want to suggest to you that I think the toughest commandment in the Bible is the command that the angel gave to the women who came to the empty tomb on Easter Sunday. Did you catch it? You find it in verse 5 of our Bible reading. The angel spoke to the women. There he was, sat on top of the stone that had been rolled away from the tomb. And he says, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. I think that's the toughest command that God has given us. Don't be afraid. The women on that first Easter Sunday morning had plenty to be afraid about. They had spent the rest of the day on Good Friday and into Easter Saturday locked in the upper room behind um, locked doors, scared for their lives. Jesus had been taken by the Jewish religious authorities and handed over to the Roman occupiers, uh, occupiers and crucified. Surely they, can, they were concerned that they would be next. If they could just be identified as one of Jesus' followers, surely they would follow that same road and find themselves crucified. They had plenty to be frightened about. They left Sometime around dawn, some of the gospel writers say while it was still dark, others around dawn, whether it was still dark or whether the light of dawn had just started to creep over the horizon, there would have been shadows to be afraid of. 
as I walked towards that tomb. Who was hiding in the shadows? Would someone turn them in? After all, Jesus had been betrayed. Peter had denied even knowing him. Perhaps there was another turncoat amongst them. Who would be hiding in the shadows? They knew that once they got to the tomb, if they were to go, if they were to go in and to prepare Jesus' body as they would have wanted to do on Good Friday but ran out of time to do, then they were going to have to get past the guards that had been posted in front of the tomb. They were going to have to have a conversation with the Roman guards. That would have been pretty fearful. And again, what would have been the outcome of that conversation? Perhaps they would have been arrested, taken away to be tried and killed as Jesus was. And then if they weren't quite frightened enough, there was an earthquake. That's enough to make you a bit frightened, isn't it? I don't know how many of you have experienced an earthquake. I remember once waking up uh, at about two o'clock in the morning and the walls shaking. And um, Gail and I are both quite deep sleepers. And so we kind of came around at the end of it and was like, was that, was that an earthquake? And it was only the next morning that we happened to be going on holiday and we turned up at Birmingham Airport and we discovered the earthquake was about a mile down the road from where we lived. (laughs) Yes, it was an earthquake. (laughs) And it was quite frightening at the time, particularly in the early hours of the morning. They would have been frightened. What on earth is happening? All the stuff that happened on Good Friday, you know, the day going dark in the middle of the day, the curtain in the temple being torn in two, all these signs that were happening around them. Oh my goodness, is this another sign? How much more can we put up with? They had plenty to be fearful about. And then there was all the emotional stuff. They had lost the leader, their rabbi, their teacher that had been with them for the last three years. And now he was gone and they were, what, 24, 48 hours into the grieving process. What on earth comes next? What does the future hold? What does this all mean? Oh, they they certainly needed to hear, don't be afraid. Don't we need to hear it too? Don't we need to hear this morning, don't be afraid? We have plenty to be afraid of. However much, or however long we've been a Christian, many of us are afraid of death. Many of us are afraid of the end. We're afraid of serious illness. We're fearful of our loved ones falling ill. We're fear, fearful of getting ill ourselves and having to battle serious illness. We may be concerned about having enough money to live on in this cost of living crisis. We have plenty to be fearful about. We may fear some of the big things going on in the world. Climate change, terrorism, crime, all sorts of other things that crowd in on us and make us fearful. And we need to hear Jesus say to us to say, don't be Afraid. Don't be afraid. If you are not yet convinced that this is the toughest commandment in the Bible, let me tell you that God knew that it was going to be so tough that he repeated it 365 times in Scripture. One, don't be afraid for every day of the year. Maybe that's what we should put on our fridges or on our mirrors, or on our bumper stickers, or wherever we put those pithy little statements to remember. Don't be afraid. Maybe it should be our social media meme. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. But why? What's behind it? What's behind the command? How can Jesus command us to not be afraid? It's because Jesus is risen. That's why we have no need to be afraid. He's done what he promised. He wasn't in the tomb when the women got there. God had intervened and raised Jesus from the dead. And we need not be afraid for two reasons this morning. The first is that the risen Jesus meets us wherever we are. Did you notice that? When the women went away from the tomb, when they had spoken to the angel... 
They went with a mixture of fear and joy. Even being told, don't be afraid, didn't stop them feeling fearful. They still felt fearful, but it was now mixed with joy. Maybe it really was true. Maybe what Jesus had said really had happened. Maybe he really was risen from the dead. You can imagine the tumultuous thoughts and emotions that must have been going through their hearts and their minds as they ran to tell the disciples that the angels had told them, or the angel had told them, that Jesus was alive. And what happened? Verse 9 tells us, And as they went, Jesus met them and greeted them. He met and greeted them where they were, not just geographically, not just as a location, but where they were emotionally and mentally. In their mixture of fear and joy, Jesus met them where they were. That's how he meets us today, however we come. I suspect that most of us have a mixture of emotion this morning. Okay? Not all of us will be completely joyful, and not all of us will be completely afraid. We will probably be a mixture of the two on this Easter Sunday. And Jesus meets us where we are. And he says, hello, I'm Jesus, I'm alive. No, that's not what he said. That would be quite fun though, wouldn't it? (laughs) Can you imagine? I I kind of imagine the women running, you've got time for me to digress like this, haven't you? Yeah, good. Um, I can imagine the women running through the streets of Jerusalem and Jesus sitting on a bench. And as they kind of run past and they don't even notice, he goes, hello, it's me. But that's not what he said. What it gave them was a traditional Jewish greeting, I suspect, which is shalom, shalom, peace, wholeness, don't be afraid. Jesus meets us in the present where we are, in our fear and our joy, and he speaks peace to us. So whatever it is that you are fearful about today, on this Easter Sunday 2023, Jesus meets you and he says, don't be afraid. Shalom, peace. Whatever it is that you are afraid of, I have had victory over. Because I'm alive. Do not be afraid. The second reason why we need not be afraid on this Easter Sunday is because Jesus promises to be in our future too. He meets us in our present, wherever we are today, but he promises to be in our future too. The angel had said to the women to go and tell the disciples in verse 7 that he's risen from the dead and he is going ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there. Remember what I have told you. We need not be afraid Because Jesus goes ahead of us. Whatever we face, whatever we face later on today, whatever we face tomorrow, whatever we face next week, whatever we face next month, next year, next decade, whatever, Jesus promises that he goes ahead of us and we will meet him there. Wherever we end up. Hands up if you know where you're going to be in five years' time. Hands up if you know where you're going to be in five minutes' time. We don't, do we? we? We think we might still be halfway through a sermon on Easter Sunday. <laughs> that woke some of you up. I don't know whether we're halfway through or not. <laughs> None of us knows where we're going to be in five minutes, let alone five years. But we need not be afraid because Jesus says, I'll be there. I'm going ahead of you. You will see me there. In the death and resurrection of Jesus, God's purpose has been fulfilled. Today, a new life, a new way of life has begun. Today, God's kingdom has come. Today, this wasn't just the dawn of a new day, but a dawn of a new age. God's new age that will continue until every knee bows before him. So we need not fear the future because Jesus is in it. And he will always be in it. And so it is Jesus' resurrection that gives us the power to live out what is the toughest command in the Bible. Do not be afraid. 
Now, I've got to be clear about this. The fact that Jesus says, do not be afraid, doesn't mean that nothing bad will ever happen to us. We know that, don't we? If we've been on a Christian journey for a, for a long time, we know that it doesn't mean that nothing bad will ever happen to us. It's not a promise that everything will turn out for the best, because we know it doesn't always turn out for the best. We will still face circumstances. In fact, there are people in this room today and who are watching online, joining in online, who already face circumstances that make them fear, fearful and anxious. And we will probably at all times face circumstances that make us fear, feel fearful and anxious. But the promise of Easter Sunday is we will not be overwhelmed. Because we are assured that God has the power to strengthen and uphold us. Whatever we face today, next week, or beyond, we do not face alone. And nothing that we will ever encounter is stronger than God's love. God always gets the last word. Whenever you are afraid, whenever you are afraid, Remember the empty tomb. Don't be afraid. Jesus is risen just as he said he would. Around a thousand years after Jesus' resurrection, there was a mystic and anchoress known as Julian of Norwich, God's own city. <laughs> Julian of Norwich lived through the Black Death she experienced political and religious unrest and upheaval. And she suffered a near-death experience. But out of that near-death experience, she wrote. And one of the most famous things that she wrote is, all shall be well. And all shall be well. And all manner of thing shall be well. Don't be afraid. All shall be well. The risen Lord can overcome anything we will ever face, anything that can hurt or destroy us. Don't be afraid. All shall be well. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. We're going to sing that song together. It's 219 in the songbook, if you're using the songbook. God sent his son, they called him Jesus. He came to love, heal and forgive. He lived and died to buy my pardon. An empty grave is there to prove my saviour lives. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future and life is worth the living just because he lives. I'm going to stay seated to sing this. And as we do so, I'm going to invite Anya and Amy, who've worked very hard this morning. We should say thank you to them as well. Uh, and Georgia as well. Yeah, do you want to give me a hand, Georgia? We've got some uh, magnetic postcards that uh, say Easter Sunday 2023 on them to remind you when you got them. And they remind us of those two things. Don't be afraid and all shall be well. Because they're magnetic, you can stick them on your fridge or you can stick them on your mirror or anything else that's metallic. As a reminder, don't be afraid. How many of us want that reminder every day? Don't be afraid. All shall be well and all shall be well and all manner of things shall be well. Let's sing together. If you would like to subscribe to Battle Ready Sermons wherever you choose to listen to podcasts or if you'd like to receive them direct to your inbox, head to www.equippinghispeople.com forward slash sermons and follow the instructions.